right now I'm going to show you how to do impositioning in uh, InDesign. Uh, what is impositioning? Impositioning is organizing the pages that are in your digital design into an order that makes sense for physical printing. Okay, and what do I mean by that? Well, imagine you need to make a booklet. Um, the order that people read the pages and the order that they get printed are not the same. So let's give a really, really quick example of why that might be. Let's pretend this front cover is page one. Okay, you'll notice that page one is printed on the same sheet, let's say the cover is like one big sheet, as the very last page. Okay, so strangely enough, page one and the last page are printed on the exact same sheet of paper. And on the other side of this, right, is the second page, and on the other side of this is the second last page. Okay, so um, that, that kind of works its way through all of the, all of the pages. So um, if we were to open this book and turn to page three, on the other side of page three would be page four, but on the other side of the sheet, right, this red cover is like a sheet. On the other side of the sheet that has page three and four would be the third last page and the fourth last page. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about here. Here's our back cover again. Page one is here, page 24 is here. And if we flip this paper, imagine we, imagine we grabbed the blue side, right, blue edge right here, and turned it over, right? Page two would be, page two would be on the back of page one, and page 23 would be on the back of page 24, okay? So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about imposing. Because when we look at the software in InDesign, sorry, when we look at the file in InDesign, it's obviously not what we see, right? We don't see things in that messed up order. We see page one, page two, page three, and so on, okay? So imposing is making sure that we produce a file where the output um, is in the correct order for printing, right? So let's look at how to do that. It's actually really, really, really simple. I'm gonna share an InDesign script with you a script, this here, booklet in position pb.jsx. This is a script that was written by Rob Day. I don't know Rob, but thank you very much, Rob. And I made some slight modifications to it in order to add, um, not add, sorry, break out the features. So uh, I'll, I'll show you what those are in a second. Okay, so the question is, how do you install this script? How do you get this script working on InDesign? Really, really, really easy. Uh, just find your scripts panel. Okay, so it's under Windows, Utilities, Scripts. Okay, and then I already have it installed, so you won't see this. Just click on this little tool here, the hamburger menu here, and it will say um, Reveal in Finder. If you're on Windows, this might say Show in Explorer or something similar. Okay, and this will show all your folder with the scripts. Um, that, that the scripts are drawn from. Uh, maybe it opens up to this and you see the scripts panel. Uh, if, you, if that is how it opens, just double click and enter scripts panel, okay? Then take the scripts file that I've provided for you, a link will be in the description, and just drag it in, okay? And I'll just replace it. It doesn't really matter, you won't have it. I already did it, so that's why it's there. Cool, okay, now we're ready to use it. So first thing you have to do is save your document. It won't work unless you save it first. And now I'm just gonna double click on the script we installed, and here are our options, okay? So in this case, I wanna print this out on 12 by 18 paper, and all I need is the bleed and the crop marks. So I'll just select those. Hit okay. And there we go. Um, you can see that it's printing full size. We have a little bit of bleed and we have the crop marks that let us cut through the bleed so we can be sure that there's color right to the edge and the document is properly imposed, okay? So these pages will nest up and give us a nice booklet. Uh, there are other options and I can run through them, although you, you may or may not even use them. Bleed marks, I'll just turn them all on and I'll show you what, the age, what each is. Um, we got bleed marks, registration marks, and bars. Okay, and originally in, in Rob's original script, bleed, registration, and bars were all one, one box, one option. I've just separated them. That's my only contribution here. Okay, so um, 
bleed marks are these here. These just tell you where the bleed ends, but that's not necessarily useful for if you're just wanting to print off uh, uh, like one copy or two copies for your own personal review. So I don't see any reason to include these. They'll just force you to use a larger paper, which you might not have access to. Okay, color bars here. Color bars are just for, you know, calibration of, of color. And so unless you're personally fine tuning the color that prints out, um, you know, uh, comparing it to swatches and so on, um, you probably don't have a use for this. And registration marks, these are for lining up different color plates. Um, so they're really for calibrating the printer. They can also be for uh, if you have a, a process where you're printing the sheet on more than one printer so you can line it up or so that you can line it up with a folding machine or a scoring machine. So again, if you're just printing one or two copies of this for personal use, you probably won't have a need for uh, registration marks. Okay, so um, don't add things you don't need because that's confusing and um, I don't see the need for those uh, for, for the assignment that's given. Okay, so that's it. That's all you need to know how to do this. And then once you have the PDF exported, you can just save this and give it to any printer. As long as they flip on short edge, you'll be okay. All right. Thanks, everyone.